Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, Bill and Colin are going fly fishing for largemouth bass near Perth, Ontario. From top water techniques to subsurface retrieve methods, you will learn new concepts for catching bass. It's going to be exciting fishing. Don't go away. Yes, sir. This is why we bass fish with flies. That was awesome. Let them go back to live another day. Oh, baby, look at that fish. Nasty pieces of throwing in on we talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got perfect conditions. We've this is a, a good example of the family Heptogeneidae. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new fly fisher was made possible thanks to Ontario, yours to discover. Scientific anglers. Islander precision reels. Today we travel to a small lake outside Perth, Ontario. This region is blessed with numerous lakes and rivers, all filled with quality bass. I got a six weight, uh, nine foot rod here with a floating line. Mm -hmm. uh, like you suggested earlier, I think that uh, probably we're gonna get some surface action right away. Clouds have come over, so I think that's probably the right conditions. Little trick that uh, fly fishers use when threading a, your rod is we we fold over the line like so so that if you put it through the guide and it happens to slip I'll show you it slips out it doesn't go any farther now that's that's a good little trick for the beginners in our audience another little tip for the beginner is uh, when you first put on a leader it's all curly cued like so in order to straighten it out, all you need to do is, is firmly hold on to each end and stretch it a bit. And as you can see, those curlicues will come out. So you just go down and do the rest of it, stretch it a bit, and see it all came out. So that's, how, that's what you do. Every time you change a leader, you just stretch it a bit and all those curlicues will come out. So we're going to start with a foam popper? Yeah, i got a foam popper here, and, it, and it's frog colored. I'm just taking a guess. I've seen some frogs by the shoreline here, and they're like a little green one, so I'm going to try that first. Okay. And hopefully that's that's what they're going to take. So this is your bass question. You've got a yeah, just, of foam. I, yeah, and... foam poppers. i got some deer hair here. i got some strip leeches, rabbit Sub leeches. Subsurface, yeah. Subsurface. Uh, actually, some clouds or minnows, which are actually more for salt water, but they do work very well for bass. And just some hair wing streamers. This is one of my favorites. Yes. Taps it, bug. And it doesn't have to be fancy. What most people think you have to have a finely tied fly, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. This is very rough looking to me, but the, the bass seem to like it. And what I've done with mine, um, I'm using a, a similar, you've got the system here, I've got a, a basic fly box and I just label them with my machine mm -hmm. and put on here surface, subsurface, and yeah. then label bass flies, etc. I've got similar, I've got a few wet flies in here, but you can see deer hair. This is one of my favorite the uh, frog patterns. We always get comments good. on the mouse patterns because they look real, but they, they do work. Doesn't necessarily have to have the ears on it for the for the, the bass to hit it. Mm -hmm. Like I say, they don't have to be finely, finely tied. The weather conditions could cause us problems with numerous fronts predicted. However, we will be versatile and experiment to find the right techniques to hook into some of these nice largemouth bass. Now what you see on camera here is a shoal. Colin just took a, a bass off it on a popper and I was puzzled because I'm looking at our depth sounder here and we're in 26 feet of water. And that just, I says, how did that happen on a popper? But now we look, we got a shoal where it's shallowed right out. This is a type of structure that you need to look for in a lake. This is out in the middle of nowhere. We did not expect to come across it, but I fully expect to take a lot of fish off it. 
Just a little guy, good one. But it just shows that this is a fish magnet here. Oh wow, look at the structure here, Bill. Look at the structure. Let me just get us off of this real quick. As you saw, this, this is actually rocks that are coming up. A little largemouth. I got 10 pound tippet, so it's easy to pick up this fish. As you can see, oops. Let's see, you've got a nice hook in him. Just comes out nice and easy. Beautiful little fish. Now what we're looking for is his dad. Okay. Now this lake is great because it has every type of typical structure you'd find in this region, including docks, fallen logs, submerged humps, rock piles, lily pads. We've got saddles between islands. And what we have to do is work the different types of structure based on time of day, water temperature, time of year, where we think the fish are gonna be. So what we're starting with right now is surface flies, just to find out where the fish are if we can. And if things work out right, we'll find them on top, which is my favorite way to catch largemouth bass. And I fully expect, Bill, we're gonna lose a fly or two to some pike today. I think so too, yeah. This, this, this is also the same type of structure that pike like. Oh, look at the look at the weeds underneath us right yes, there. Yes, this this is this is very 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 productive waters here. I think uh, we got down trees here. We got we got boulders. We have uh, weed patches, lily pads. This is everything you want for bass or pike. Do you love fly fishing? Are you wanting to learn how to fly fish? Then subscribe to the New Fly Fisher online magazine. It's free. Each issue is filled with great stories, information on techniques, tackle, and fly patterns. You can view this magazine on your personal computer, smart tablet, or other device. Each issue contains great stories, photography, and instructional video. To subscribe, go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. things that's really important is that when you cast is to immediately get the slack out of your line. I've lost a lot of nice bass where I've cast out, looked down to pick up my line and missed a strike. A lot of times when that fly hits the surface and Bill you know this, yes. boom they're on it. You don't realize it but you just popped a nice big bass, a fly or he thinks it's a frog or some gift, boom they're on it. So you've got to tighten up right away and be ready for that strike as soon as you cast. So like when I cast over here, these lily pads, I'll put one right in the edge here. I can immediately pull in some line here and keep it nice and tight. And then I can start putting the moon on it. Give it a little action. There's a lot of times I put these frog patterns out and boom, they hit right away. Here we're coming up to a classic piece of structure. I've just put my fly right up against the dock. An overhead structure like this is almost always a bass of some size. Oh, got, oh, missed him. Right there, right where he should be. I'll put it in there again, real tight, and if I miss it, I'll put Bill. And just. But that is a prime area for bass. Oh, there we go. I got one. I just put it close to the lily pads there and let it sit for a minute and let the ripples subside. And then I popped it a couple of times and I got myself just a small little ma large mouth here. Hopefully his big brother will come. Behind me from this swim platform that we have Right along to where we're at right now, we've been drifting over milfoil type of weeds on the bottom. They're down eight to 10 feet. The fish are very active.
they're coming up and hitting our poppers on the top. So we're going to concentrate on this area right now and take as many fish as we can. But this is a type of structure and cover that you're looking for. Anywhere a fish can ambush their prey is where you want to be. There we go. Little guy oh. got it. Little guy got yeah. it? Yeah. Right at the edge of that weed. Those weeds there, that's, that's exactly where I wanted to go. It's ambush. Remember what we were talking about ambush. This is what they want. Anywhere they can ambush their prey. And that's not bad. It's not huge, but it's, it's a fish and I'm having a great day. Not very big, but it's a bass anyways. Again, the structure that I was over was a weed bed and I placed the fly right on the edge of the weed bed and jerked it then and the fish come up from the edge. Well, we decided to change over from our poppers. Uh, we're not getting any action right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to an intermediate line, which is a subsurface line, and we're going to concentrate on structure uh, 8 to 15 feet down, whether that be a boulder, uh, any kind of down logs or anything like that, weed uh, edges. We're going to concentrate on that right now with a much slower retrieve. It's the height of the day right now, and we believe the fish are, have gone down. Yep. Got something. Oh, yeah. That was a decent fish, Phil. I hope so. I'm just about had a disaster here. What were you doing? I was just, I have an intermediate line on, and I was just slowly bringing it in. Now I think with the boat moving forward, oh, with the boat moving forward, yes, it's a bass. It was just at the right speed. And all, all I felt was the line tighten up. I did not feel a big boom. The line just tightened up, so I, so I set the hook. I've got a little minnow pattern on, a little red and yellow. And this is a decent bass. Now we're in deeper water. We're, we, we're doing a different technique than we were earlier. So, there we go. That's a decent one. I'll show you the fly here in a second. But a decent little bass. That's an average bass in this lake. But I'll show you what I've been using. We went from the top of the water down to a subsurface fly here. It's just a, a standard yellow red. Um, if you go back to your, your hardware using days, it's much like a daredevil. Same colors. I think it's an attractor. Uh, they just they seem to like it for some reason. Okay, now this guy get a little bigger. Some of the ones I've got today. Again, using an intermediate line. And oh, there you go. Still haven't got the big ones yet. We'll find them. They'll come later on today, I think. That's a that's a decent size one. For most people. Got about six feet of leader, 10 pound test, coming to this fly. And this fly has no name. I just made it with scraps on my table, but it works here for bass. Green, bit of black, bit of red, works great. Key is the intermediate line. Looking for world-class fishing at reasonable prices? Want the best of bass, brook trout, pike, and walleye fishing that is easily accessible? then come to the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. Easy to access by road, plane, or even train, Algoma features some of the best fishing in the world. To learn more, go to algomaregion.com or call toll free 1-800-263-2546. Fish. Good fish. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Colin, my God, that's a great one. What'd you do there? Well, you just brought us past the edge of that big reef, and I threw my fly across, and I was actually letting you troll me a bit over there. There we go. Oh, yeah, That's what we're looking for. Fish. Anyways, uh, I was just giving it light tugs, and I was just starting to give it some faster retrieves. This guy took, and he really jerked the rod. That's what I love when they when they're aggressive like this. It's just fantastic. Oh, looks like the wind's gonna drift us. Okay, let's get this guy in. That's a decent fish. Oh, yes. 
down right in the corner of the mouth there. Let's get away from the boat a bit here. Can I go down? Okay, see if we can get this guy. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for. Nice fish. Just in the corner of the mouth. Isn't that beautiful? That's probably about, I don't know, two and a half, three pounder. Not real big. We're looking for the five pounders, which we know are here. So let's put him back in. There he goes. Not real big, but he just raced up there. Hammered it. Eh? He wasn't gonna let it, he wasn't gonna let it go. It looks like it was a bit of a pothole there where it was sitting. So we've just got back on the lake. Um, what's happened is we got forced off, thunder and lightning. I mean this has been happening all day, front after front after front. And Bill and I just got back out, and this is actually good. Sometimes the fish will turn off. Bill's got a fish on now. Um, sometimes it isn't. But the bottom line is it usually is good. Large, largemouth bass are, are great for coming back on, especially as you can see. It's flat calm almost now. And I put on a surface fly. Bill's using a subsurface. I'm going to give this a try, and I might flip over. But a lot of the times, it's great fishing right after a heavy rain, a bit of thunder and lightning. It's just wonderful. Let's give this a try for the next few minutes. Nice, nice take too. Yes, kaboom. And we're at about <laughs> six to eight feet of water right now. And the fish are looking up and they're looking for food. Oh, decent fish too. Bad. Not bad, not bad. Not huge, but it's always fun to catch a fly on top, which is what I absolutely love. Catching something like that, you know, it's not a huge fish, but it, on a surface fly, this is just great. Good fish. <laughs> and what a, isn't that amazing, Bill? Yeah. How you just need to be versatile to change your tactics. We were going too slow before. Oh, look at that. Look, oh, look at that. We were running with slow, like with the conditions before as they were. This is an eight weight rod, and this guy's just ripping line. Look at this. <laughs> I love this. People don't take advantage of summer bass fishing enough. This is great. Oh, he's really. Oh, yeah, he's fighting. He's giving you a good fight there, isn't he's he? He's doing a great job here. And he came out of about six to eight feet of water. Take this. He's already got, I can see he's got some weed in there. Well, this decent fish. Look at that. Real decent fish, huh? Yeah. The first one since the storm. Okay, he just, just reached down. He's got it right in the lip. Just getting ready, I think, to jump again. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Just caught him in the front lip. I'm gonna get my forceps here. Just got it right here in the lower lip. There we go. Get that weed off. That is a beautiful largemouth bass. Using right. a very aggressive fast action. You got another one, eh, Bill? I got another, it's a small one. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let's but the retrieve is the secret tonight. Yeah. Give him some, there he goes. It's the right species. That's a nice one, Bill. Okay, where's that shoal? It's what we're looking for. That's 
Bigger fish. Okay, and I got a small one too. There we go. Even those aren't big fish, it's big sure fish a lot of fun, isn't it? Oh, is this, this is just a riot as far as I'm concerned. It's very visual. One comment I will make though, you must wait a second when the fish hits for it to take it in its mouth and take it down. If you strike too fast, you'll pull the hook right out of the fish's mouth. So that's, that's one little tip I can give you. Hey, the fish have turned off again, haven't they? Yeah. This is a good fish. Better get him on the reel. Oh, oh yeah, yes sir. Keep that line tight. A fish this size, you must get it on the reel. I've been casting long distances. So that's why I had so much line out, but man, this is a good fish. And he's taking line out, oh yes, good fish. Now it was in that weed, in the, the lily pads I should say, and it went between two lily pads and I seen the flash. All I felt was the line sort of slow down, almost stop, and that's when I set the hook. Now this, this guy is, oh man, this is a good fish. He is fighting hard, yes. Again, we had to switch our, our tactics. They went off the surface flies. So we went with intermediate lines, which for the beginners, that means a sinking line. And I've got a minnow pattern on, and we're fishing structure. This is why we bass fish with flies. That means everything to me. Nice hook set, taken out, and as you can see, this is the fly I used, red and yellow. Take a nice look at him, very nice. And he gave me a hearty fight, gave me a hearty fight to fight another day. Oh, that was fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and you learned a little bit, little bit about bass fishing with flies. We had to change tactics, you must be versatile. For more information on this show and other shows we have, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher was made possible thanks to Ontario, yours to discover, scientific anglers, sage fly rods, and as you can see, we have very healthy fish. Of his tail. Don't squeeze him. Very nice brown. Gave me a real good fight. Okay. There he goes.